So I've been running and playing a lot of 5th edition the last few months. I run two at home campaigns, I run a campaign after D&D encounters, and I run encounters. So that's four games conceivably. I have my monster races game that I ran once, hopefully running it twice. I had my meat grinder without the meat, or without the extra meat game that I ran once. Plan on running it again. Um, everybody except for one player died, so everybody thought it might be fun to play again at 7th level with that. Uh, so, I've been playing a lot of it. I've played in a few games online. Um, I'm playing in the Provokers campaign. So, I think it's safe to say I've got a lot of time invested in playing 5th edition D&D. Now, that doesn't make me an expert. I'm not going to say I'm an expert. I'm not. And I haven't analyzed the math of how things work exactly. But, there was somebody recently who brought up the druid in 5th edition being overpowered, especially the ones that are Circle of the Moon and can change into bears. Brown bears, more specifically. Now the brown bear, yes, he's got 30-some hit points, which is more than any other character at 2nd level. Yes, it can do multiple attacks. Yes, it does good amount of damage. Like, all these things are great. It has 11 AC. In order to do its multiple attacks, it has to be within five feet of anything it attacks. Sure, it's going to take a lot out at once. Anybody whose distance is going to hit it, though. So, I guess what I'm, I'm getting at is, while the, yeah, it seems overpowered, your tactics when you switch into a bear have to be tank. You have to be up there fighting, because otherwise you're ineffective at all. You can't cast your spells in bear form at second level. You know, so... You're 11 AC, you're up there fighting close quarters with more than one enemy, we'll say. Okay, well, you're fighting more than one enemy. If the enemies are using the tactics of the book, one of them can be aiding another, so that one could have advantage to hit the bear, which doesn't even need advantage, but it ups the chances of a crit. Uh, you could have multiple of those guys take a dodge defensive action, which then makes so the bear can't hit them. You could also have some guys hitting it from range. Like I said, 11 AC is a very easy thing to hit. In fact, most monsters in the game have higher ACs than that, even at low levels. Um, you know, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, okay, the bear's taken two attacks. It's biting and clawing one, two people, we'll say, per round. Um, which I'm, you know, I'm not even sure if multi-attack allows you to hit two different attack, two different targets. But I'm gonna pull it up right now, because I am curious uh, about this. Um, it doesn't even specify. So apparently you could hit both. Um, so you could bite one and claw another, or claw one and bite the other. That's fine. So it is, with its claws, it does 2d6 plus 4 damage, and it's a plus 5 to hit. So even if it has a plus 5 to hit, you know, it's going to hit... I mean, that's the equivalent of a maul. So if you make an NPC fighter, fighting this brown bear, it's going to wipe this brown bear's butt off. It's going to have an AC of at least a 15, 16 probably, which makes him better than the brown bear. Uh, so I guess my point is designing an encounter for this bear is not a big deal. Um, and I've went on a long time with this, and the whole point of this video is that Sure, he's got 35 hit points there, and then if he does it a second time, there's another 35. So that's 70, plus at second level, the druid might have anywhere from 10 to 20 hit points. I think it'll be closer to 16 hit points. So, based on the averages, I believe. So, okay. So you get the bear down in hit points to low amounts. You're down to, say, under 5. You get hit by the bad guy for 10 points of damage. Your druid will now be at 11 points of hit points. 11 hit points. In druid form, you're still probably going to have a couple more bad guys that get to hit him, right? Because he's swarmed by four bad guys. Your druid could conceivably die right there. It doesn't. It's not as OP as people think. It's not like you have a pool of 95 hit points that have to wither away. No. It's. 35, 16, 35. 
And that's if you're not making your character roll for their animal hit points, which I would make them roll. I just think it's better that way. Add some variety. Um, but anyway, so, so conceivably, by doing that as the bear, you get in close, you're really hurting yourself as the druid because you're not most effective in your bear form. Sure, it sounds like it from looking at how much damage you can do and things like that, but you have spells that can do more than that at second level. You know, you have, for instance, I'll just pull, pull a couple up real quick. Um, druids are just, they're more effective in other ways. So, Thunder Wave would be more effective than turning into a bear when you're facing more than one or two targets. At second level, uh, you could do a lot of different things as well. Spike Growth. Again, more effective than turning into a bear at second level. It, I mean, it is. It's dealing multiple points of damage. You can hit, it at, hit them at range as they move through that difficult terrain, taking damage. You know, those are just two examples. You know, I'm not even going to go any further into it. Entangle is a good one. You know, so there's a lot more effective things you can do than turn into a bear. Just my opinion. So, for anyone saying, oh, it's overpowered, it's not. It's really not. If you really want to make overpowered characters, stack your AC. You can't get hit, you're not going to die. You know, if you up your AC. So, let's see, I've done a barbarian with 20 some. AC. So here, I'll break it down for you how I did it. It was Constitution, I think 20 or 19 at first level. I think it was 19 because I rolled stats. Um, and then Dex was, I believe, 20 or 19 as well. Um, so we'll just max those out for the heck of it. I don't think that's possible at first level. But um, we'll just do it anyway. So that's 5, that's 10 right there. So okay, so you'll be a stout halfling barbarian. Many people are like, well, why would you do that? You should have strength. Strength should be your focus. Because when you rage, then you can't um, use your damage bonus unless it's strength-based weaponry. Uh, well, again, I think stacking your AC is the best way to go if you're really trying to min-max. And here's why. So you do that, right? You also, from raging, get the damage resistance, um, which is excellent. It removes, I think it's half damage. So anytime you do get hit, so you have to get hit twice to make up the damage of being hit once normally. So say 20-20, right? So that's plus 5, plus 5. You're already up to AC 20. Your shield is 22. Now, if you were to, at 4th level, take fin uh, Defensive Duelist, that means when you have a finesse weapon in your hand, uh, your proficiency bonus is added to your AC once as a reaction. Okay, so that means your 22 AC all the time, you're 25 AC at 4th level. So, that's amazing. Are you really going to get hit? Probably not by much. Most things at that point, I mean, would have to roll like a 19 or 20 to hit you. That's with their bonuses. So, you know, I, I just think that's the easiest way to make yourself overpowered. And you can do that with any class, as long as you boost your AC. You know, you can do it with a monk. Monk does it based on a couple things. I think it's the same deal. Uh, you also have, you could do your, your heavy armor as a fighter. So, yeah, fourth level, your proficiency bonus is a plus two. So, um, defensive duelist would bump it to 24, I believe. Maybe it's one plus your proficiency or something. I don't know. But anyways, point is you add your proficiency bonus. Um... The other things you can do uh, is if you're a fighter, right, you go defense. Well, okay, so you make yourself defensive style. That's a plus one. You get a shield. That's plus two, right? So that's total plus three. You go with plate armor. So by that level, you might be able to afford it. It depends on what your, your DM is going to allow you to do. Um, so I'm just going to pull it up and look at it. Uh, plate is 1500 gold so you might not be able to afford it but it's an 18 armor class so 18 plus 3 puts you at 21 AC um, 
you then could take something like Heavy Armor Master, which gives you sort of a damage reduction. It's a minus three off of anything non-magical, basically. Um, so that would help a lot. But yeah, so, I mean, you're sitting at a high number. Then, if you wanted to, because you're using a shield, and say you want to make your guy a dex-based fighter and you want higher AC, you could do that same thing I said before, defensive duelist, instead of the heavy armor master. Well, now again, you're adding your proficiency bonus on top of 22, which again puts you at 24. So, that's pretty sweet, you know? And you could do that as a human, so you could do that at first level, well, minus the plate armor. You could do it with chainmail at first level, which only drops at 2, so you could be a 20 or a 22 AC um, at first level. First level, I think? Something like that. Close to it. Point is, I think AC is the most OP thing you could do. Um, get it as high as possible, as quick as possible. The thing about the Barbarian that makes it better for this, not only do you have more hit points, you have a 1d12 per level, when you hit 20th level as a Barbarian, you can bump your Strength, which doesn't have to do with your AC, but you can bump your Strength, and you can bump your Constitution up to 24. So bumping your Constitution to 24 is two extra points to your unarmored defense. You know, So you can get up to, I think I was doing the math the other day, I can't remember if it was over 30. Ooh. Yeah, so... 24 is 5, 6, 7 from Constitution. Your dex at 20 is 5, so you're at 22, right? Yeah, 22 AC. Shield puts you at 24. And then if you use the uh, defensive duelist, that's your proficiency bonus at 20th level, that's plus 6. So you're at 30 AC. Now, 30 AC is still really awesome. And here's why I say that. Because if you're at 30 AC, something like a Baylor is a plus 14 to hit, more than likely it's going to miss you most times. Plus 14 to hit from a Baylor. I mean, if you're not maxing out your AC, you're going to struggle at high levels against some of these monsters in the monster manual. You know? So take that for what it is. But my advice to you, if you are a min-maxing power gamer, is to bump your AC. Don't worry about how much damage you can do. Don't worry about how many hit points you can soak. Because frankly, monsters are going to wither away those hit points in a few levels. Low levels, probably not. But they will in a few levels. And they're going to tear you up. So, AC is the way to go. I stand by that. If you disagree, tell me why below. I really do want to hear it. Um... You know, obviously, if you're doing encounters, you can still try to bump your AC as high as possible. There are limits because of the point array or the point buy and being capped out at, I think, a 15 to start the game. Then your racial bonus of a plus 2 can get you to a 17 in some things. So you can't bump your AC as much as you want in things like encounters. Um, the way around that is if you're a fighter and you use heavy, you know, chain mail, shield... A feat as a human. I mean, there's still ways to do it with other things, but the way that Encounters is designed, it negates the AC for Barbarians at first level. Um, it negates, you know, your AC for Monks at first level. So, you know, do what you want. Play the game how you want. You know, if you want a power game in my game, I'm fine with that. If you want to make a flawed character because of story purposes, I'm fine with that, you know. I think I'm pretty flexible on things, but if your purpose is to min-max, I encourage you to at least look at the armor class uh, and how you can bump that as high as possible and why. Uh, most games I've played, if you, know, if you can find a way to not get hit as much, that's usually the best way to go to be the most effective character in combat alone. So, yeah. So that's it. Um, like I said, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my video with all your friends. And if you think you know of some overpowered builds, throw them at me. I'll check them out. I'll try them out. I'll test them out and, you know, see how they go. Uh, but, you know, I think the video speaks for itself. So, again, I, I do want to test this against other people's builds. Um, I would probably take a 20th level Barbarian with 
maxed out AC over almost any other class at 20th level. You know, obviously there's some magics that can bypass things and stuff like that, but or put you to sleep or, you know, there's a lot of things that every class can do to give them the advantage. There's everything, like every class has something it can do to power game and min-max. And it might not always be the AC, but, you know, as a fighter or anyone who's going to be front lines, I think AC is the way to go. So that's it. Thank you for watching.